have you for another episode of Somewhere Out There. Joe Hero here. In chapter five of Intruders, named The Camping Trip and Other Adventures, Bud recounted how some information had been clarified by his first trip to Indiana. While other twists to the story had been brought to light, not the least of which was Kathy's disclosure of her alleged lost child. A particularly interesting story was of a camping trip over the 4th of July weekend in 1975, which resulted in Kathy having a recurring dream involving her friend Nan's father's truck and four lights descending and spinning. She was clutching the CV radio and asking, Who are you? What's happening? Bud discussed the event in detail with Kathy, who said it happened as follows. Kathy and Nan, Nan's brother, and Kathy's boyfriend Sam were in Nan's father's truck playing on the CB, talking to four guys who claimed to be out camping near them and wanted to come see them. After some time, the others got bored of this and left Kathy in the truck. She continued to talk to quote-unquote the boys and recounted seeing lights coming down the road and the quote-unquote boy on the radio said, I see you. They got out, and she did as well, meeting them halfway. There were only three, though, as the fourth apparently did not want to come. There was a blonde one who was real cute, and Kathy got the impression that he liked her. They went into the cabin quite late, at midnight or so, yet everyone was still awake, including Nan's little brother. Then they had some beers and went outside, building up the campfire. They stayed a long time, with the blonde boy doing all the talking. Strangely, Kathy could not describe the other two, except to say that they all had blue shirts on and that the other two boys were tall and skinny and may have looked alike. Bud's interview with Nan and Sam, now married, yielded amazingly similar recollections, including not being able to describe the, the two tall, skinny boys who never spoke. Nan's mother also remembers the same details and retained the same gaps. Details of the car the boys came up in were strange, including a single headlight and the fact that it smoothly glided over the extremely bumpy dirt road. Also, it had no taillights. The details of the cute blonde boy were startlingly like that of Kathy's own looks, so much that the boy could have been Kathy's masculine twin while hypnotic descriptions of the other two still resulted in nothing except that they were taller and not like him. Kathy became dizzy when they entered the cabin, and the environment she described would suggest that everyone in the cabin had been switched off. Nan experienced other instances where she may have had further encounters after the camping trip years later. The neighbor, Joyce Lloyd, seemed also to be almost interconnected with the Davis case, as she, in addition to having witnessed the light and its disruptions in the Davis yard, had her own encounters. She bore a scoop mark on her leg similar to Kathy and Mary's, and one peculiar incident was especially detailed in this chapter by Bud. In the summer of 1984, Joyce woke in the night upside down in her bed next to her husband. Chilled and damp, her wet feet on her pillow. Under hypnosis, she saw a silver object initially screened as a car with weird markings on it. It was out in a field and she was pinned down. Her neck ached and she saw a bright light. Using Bud's technique of uncovering difficult memories, she almost remembered a humanoid figure in her stepson's room. Interestingly, the seemingly careless ret return of abductees is not an uncommon occurrence as in the 1973 Patty Price case demonstrated when she and four of her children were abducted and the children awoke in different beds than when they had went to sleep. The physical evidence, such as Joyce's damp clothing and wet feet, witnessed by her husband, and Kathy's awaking with her panties left outside the covers, strongly suggests that something physically happened to these victims. Joe Hero here. Be safe until next time.